Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we have a super interesting topic to dive into and it comes from one of your comments. So shout out to Zombie Gamerist for bringing this up. The question is all about dummy spells in World of Warcraft. It's not really about dummy spells, but it's about making this particular spell functional. Specifically, he's wanting to modify this particular spell, which is a boss spell, as an ability for a class or something like that, right? The examples given for this explosive rocket turret the challenge here is to make the turret stay in one place and fire rockets instead of chasing enemies around and meleeing them in the face. So this is a fantastic question and opens up a can of worms, or should I say a box of rockets? Bruh. Whether you're a seasoned WoW developer or just getting started with custom spell creation, this video is going to be packed with insights. Before we jump in, make sure to hit the like button if you find this topic interesting, and don't forget to subscribe for more in-depth WoW development tutorials. All right, let's get into it. So first thing first, the spell ID, right? We're gonna look it up, we're gonna test it out, see how it works, see what's wrong with it. So right now, this is a summon spell, and the destination is the front left of the caster. It summons this particular NPC, and this is the summon properties DBC value. I have no idea what this one is. I'm probably gonna change it to 61 because that's super easy to deal with. 61 is basically a guardian. I use it for pretty much all my custom summon spells that I don't have like control over the pet. And of course the periodic dummy spell. This, no idea what it does. I actually did a short lookup in both the core and the database and I couldn't find anything on it. So who knows, it could just be scripted differently. Kind of like the Ashbringer dummy aura, that's actually scripted completely different in the core than uh, what it's supposed to be. So unfortunately with the targeting system being the way it is, you have to target an enemy for this particular spell. We're gonna go ahead and drop this dummy though. So what we're gonna do first, before anything else, is cast a spell, see what it does. Huh, yeah, so that's, that's a fun one. This actually kind of reminds me of a different spell is the goblin turret i think it's called turret i don't know let's let's just look up a turret spell actually i have uh, i was i was looking into this earlier so the, the gnomish flame turret is probably the most underused item in the game and when it comes to like awesome engineering items but basically all it does is sit there and use flamethrower on the target over and over and over again. This one actually doesn't have any problem with actually just sitting there and not moving and attacking the target. And you'll notice it has the guardian tag as well, whereas the other one has the construct tag. So this is the same tag that we're gonna be using. This particular NPC actually has its own script and we could copy it, but we'd have to modify the script so that it, it uses rockets every few seconds, right? Instead, what I have set up is a Lua script that I heavily annotated so that you can get all the details about how it works. But before we get there, we have to change a couple things. So first thing first, we got to create a new spell. So we're just going to go ahead and duplicate that existing spell. And I like to put eights in front of everything because that lets my team know, hey, this is a Dinkle Dark spell. Don't touch it. I do the same thing with creatures, so anything with an 8 in front of it is mine. Except for, you know, vanilla spells or whatever. So, um, so yeah, now we have our, our copied spell. I'm going to change a couple things about it. So the targeted des destination, front left, I don't like that. I'm going to go ahead and do it in the caster front area. I'm going to go ahead and keep this radius the same. This just means that it's going to be cast 3 feet in front of the caster. I'm going to go ahead and change this value to 61, which is for a guardian. You can look this up in your DBC if you want to get more information about it. There are, of course, guides online on how to use it. So again, the DBC is called Summon Properties DBC. And this is kind of the information that you get about things. So yeah. So again, we're just going for a guardian. This is This is the biggest one. Now, there's a couple ways to do this. You could do the smart thing and make this into a smart script. That's probably the most efficient way in terms of memory and stuff like that. But I am lazy and like to do things in Lua. I also think that Lua has a lot more control over it. You can change things more easily. You can hot load things and it's just more efficient that way. But anyway, I think I think there's a couple other things I want to change about the spell. Let me just make sure. Right, so we're going we're gonna go ahead and remove that dummy aura. And this just makes it so that we don't have to actually target an enemy. 
we can actually just target ourselves and it'll summon said NPC. Uh, and then this is going to be changed into, th this is the current NPC, right? But I'm going to be changing this into a new NPC. So 32350 is the name of the NPC that we're going to be duplicating. So duplicate row with keys, add an eight in front of it, call it a day, right? And then you're going to want to go through each row and make sure it has the values that you want. I'm going to make this particular NPC level 60. Experience doesn't matter. Faction doesn't matter. The faction gets set when you summon the NPC, so that really doesn't matter. Damage modifier doesn't matter because that's for melee attacks. Uh, unit flag 2 probably doesn't matter. Type flags, I'm just going to go ahead and clear out. I'm going to change this to 10. 10 is... 10 is not specified. You could change it to 9, which is mechanical. That's fine. We're just gonna let's just do nine. We'll keep it thematic. Why not? You can keep this blank because we're gonna be overriding the AI. Health modifier. I'm gonna set this a little bit higher. Um, when I tested this earlier, at one, it was like 5,000 HP. So five with 2,000 HP is not too bad. You could probably set it a little bit lower. In fact, let's just go ahead and do that. And. Um, regen health, this is if it leaves combat. Mechanic immune masks, I'm going to go ahead and remove that as well. Although you could keep that in, there's probably going to be certain things that you want the uh, the NPC to be to. So, for example, if you go into the Azeroth core database, you'll see all these flags that you can add up on the left-hand side to make him immune to certain mechanics. You can do the same thing with schools if you wanted to. So if you wanted to get rid of diseases, nature spells, whatever, you know, you could add that here. And then, uh, yeah, I mean, some of this stuff is optional. Like, you don't have to do the regen health. If you want them to leave combat and regenerate their health, that's fine. Doesn't matter. And then I'm also going to go to unit flags. One thing you want to be aware of is if there is a two here, get rid of it. It will make the NPC unattackable and likely not function as intended. So for unit flags, I'm actually gonna put a four here. And what unit flags do, particularly the number four, is it disables the move function. So that's the easiest way to make the NPC not move. This is actually scripted in for the other NPC in the instance. And the reason why it doesn't work outside the instance is because it's instance specific. So anyway, yeah. Just make sure that the unit flag doesn't have like 512 value in it because that just means, again, that they are immune to damage. Just disables combat assistance with non-player characters or 256, right? So it disables the combat assistance with player characters. So make sure that these two values don't exist or they don't add up. After that's done, I'm actually gonna go back to the spell real quick because I, there's a couple things else I wanna change. So the recovery time right now is three minutes, so 180 thousand seconds in milliseconds it's three minutes duration i'm gonna go ahead and set to 30 seconds then the range i'm just gonna go ahead and do self only because i don't want the tooltip saying hey you know this is a 30 yard range cast or whatever who cares global cooldown gonna keep it the same um let's see what else energy i mean you can make this cost power if you want it doesn't matter uh, you can change the school type i'm just going to keep it at physical flags we're just going to go double check the biggest one to actually make sure is checked is ability just so it shows up in your spell book if you want to you could also add this to skill line ability dbc in order to make it show up in the particular spell book tab that you want you just copy an existing entry so for example if you wanted it to show up in the discipline tab you would just look for the inner fire entry in skill line ability dbc copy it all the way to the bottom and then put your new custom spell into that and it would show up in this spell book tab that's how i did the 3d belts so anyway except that one's got its own unique tab and yeah it's a little bit more complicated so if you wanted to add a new fancy icon you could go ahead and do that i'm gonna go ahead and look one up I have a lot of extended icons, so that's good. But once I have the icon that I want, I'm gonna go ahead and hit confirm at the top, hit yes, confirm again, no. And this just means that the active aura and the active spell match each other. 
After that, we're just going to go ahead and export everything. We're going to go ahead and shut down the server, turn off our client. We're going to open Latix MPQ editor, open our patch with the DB files client. Then we're going to go to where our exports are for spell editor, grab the spell DBC, slap it in our client, and slap it in our server's DBC folder, which I have in my quick access. After that, we're going to go ahead and start up the server again, start up our client as well, log back in, and then we're just going to go ahead and attempt to use the spell. So I went ahead and learned the spell via GM command. It's a two second cast. If you want, you can also reduce this to like an instant cast. I might actually do that. Go to base, change cast time to zero. And I'll apply that later. All right, so looks like it is attempting to enter in combat, but it can't move towards the target. So our movement disable is working perfectly. So next comes the more challenging part. And again, this is this is a Lua script that's pretty simple, but I went and over explained the crap out of it. I like to use, uh, so I'm, gonna go, I'm just gonna go line by line about what everything does, all right? I have additional notes. I have another script that you can look at as an example for something else that I brought up. I'll include this in a link. And you can have fun with it, you can read it, you can ignore it, that's fine. Whatever you wanna do. So first thing first, I like to create a namespace. This just makes sure that there's, for me, for someone who uses a ton of Lua scripts, this just, this just makes sure that I don't have other scripts interfering with each other. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and define the NPC ID here because we're gonna be using it multiple times in the script. It makes it a lot easier to change later on if we need to. Um, so let me change it to the right ID. In the rest of the script, we're actually gonna be using this rather than this. Uh, so, so spell IDs to cast. This is this is the spell I chose. You can choose whatever spell you want though. But basically what it does is it's it's a rocket launcher. So it does school damage, it does a knockback, and then it does periodic damage. You add a second spell cast here if you wanted to, right? Just get rid of the commented out portion. And then this is the function to actually cast the spells. So uh, I do talk a little bit more about the arguments and how arguments really work. And a lot of that's down below. I'm not gonna go into it in too much detail here, but for this, we're basically defining a function on how we want the creature to behave with said spell. And so we have the creature cast the spell. We get the creature's victim, which is its highest target. And then we have this spell that we're casting. Sorry, this spell that we're casting. And this true statement just means that the cast is free and instant. I did put some notes here about interrupting your own spells in scripts. If you wanted to add a second spell to cast, you'd define it the same way as above. You would just use second spell to cast, basically a different function name. And then you'd uncomment this out. And down here, you would also uncomment this out. And you can set your cast times. This is the function for on entering combat. You need two arguments for that, right? Creature, register event. This is basically just telling the creature, hey, we wanna cast this, this first spell, this one right here, right? And we wanna cast it every three seconds and we wanna do it indefinitely. If you put a number here, three for example, then it'll only cast it three times before it's just done. Next things next is we have kind of our mandatory functions, which is on leave combat and on died. This is to remove any existing events so that the NPC doesn't keep trying to cast the spell even when they die or when they leave combat. Just a really easy way to save memory. It's, uh, it's always good to clear events whenever you leave combat or died. Um, and then these are the event registries. Right, so we have on enter combat, on leave combat, on died. And you can actually look up most of these hooks in your server core. I left how to get here in the comments here as well. So additional notes just kind of talks a little bit more about arguments and um, name namespaces. It also talks about some of the downsides to using namespaces. You don't need to use them. So what a names what it would look like without a namespace is basically like local function 
cast spell. You still probably want to make sure that this is being something unique that you won't use in any other script. For me, this, this namespace basically has two functions. It makes sure that I'm not interfering with other scripts and it makes sure that my functions are not interfering with other scripts. So, but yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it. I also kind of bring up this other fight where it has a spell queue system so that you're not interrupting your own spells. But since we have this true statement, which means it's free and instant cast, we don't need to worry about that. We're just gonna go ahead and go back into the game and we're gonna go ahead and reload. Yeah. And we're gonna go ahead and cast the spell yet again. And we're going to attack the target. And it looks like our turret is successfully casting. And we don't have any errors. So that's a good thing. And the target's not, or sorry, the creature's not attacking anymore now that it's dead so that's a good thing too that's that's a different error don't worry about that but yeah i mean there's no other related errors that we have to worry about if you're ever working on a lewis script and you just can't get something working this is a good place to look right most of you probably already know that if the server crashes on you and there was an error and you can't see it just go into your uh just go into your crashes or your logs folder under server logs and it'll, it'll tell you what was wrong with it, right? So that's a pretty simple script. I've done a lot of these types of spells. So Pocket Cannon, for example, summons a Manable Flame Turret to lay waste to your enemies for the next 30 seconds. Is that a cannon in your pocket or are you just happy to see me? So yeah, this is actually coming from the Scourge event that I have set up that's custom. You can actually buy this with a hundred tokens. And uh, yeah. Last 30 seconds, two hour duration, sorry, two hour cooldown. And uh, you can just kind of have fun with it for a little bit every once in a while. So I've got a repair. The, the napalm actually regenerates mana. And then the flame turret spell actually uses mana. So yeah, kind of fun. I can talk about how to do something like that too in the future if you guys are interested. And there you have it, folks. We've taken a deep dive into the world of dummy spells. Not really. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, we, we really just dove into the art of disabling movement and scripting out your own NPCs, but uh, yeah, <laughs> I hope this clears up any confusion and gives you a new tool you need to create your own custom spells. If you found this video helpful or learned something new, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Your support really helps out the channel. Thanks for watching, and until next time, I'll see you guys on the other side of Azeroth.